My wife and I recently visited the Embassy RV facility in Elkhart, Indiana, and we were fortunate enough to meet with Terry Minix, the owner of one of the most innovative um, vehicle builders in the nation. Now, coming from me, that is high praise indeed. I don't tend to make those kinds of statements, ever. We toured the facility from top to bottom, and I had like an hour of footage or even more to edit, uh, so I don't doubt we were with Terry for well over two hours, maybe more. Um, we originally went there hoping, if we were lucky, to have someone, anyone, show us a van. But to our surprise, Terry had planned the, his whole day around us. He went well beyond our expectations and, and showed us everything from design processes to custom van bills, let us ask all the questions we wanted, and, and let us record everything. Now that is something I have never had happen in my life. We cannot give high enough praise to everyone at Embassy RV for giving us their valuable time to show us how they make their business a success. Terry has a passion and an integrity that he brings to everything he does, um, not only for himself, but for his customers too. This is the first of three videos. Uh, this one is mostly about embassy custom bills and design processes. Um, please forgive my amateur video editing skills. Um, it's a working facility, so there's a lot of ambient noise. Oh, and if you want, leave a comment. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think. Be seeing you. I started as a van conversion company building van conversions like every other company in Elkhart did. And in 1984, I won uh, a bid for building vehicles that hold satellite dishes behind them and they subbed them out to the military and they communicated mm. all over the world. The satellite dishes were so big in 1984, I had to put a coil of steel in the back of a Ford van and we had to beef up the brakes until it would stop under a football field because the satellite dish was on a trailer behind it and it had the power unfold. It was this right. monster thing. And you didn't have all the braking stuff back then that you had right, right. now. Uh, I built three of those for the satellite company that just put some new satellites up in space for communication for the military and I built them. That got me into commercial and got me excited about some of that industry and that's when I started really getting into a lot of commercial stuff. This would be a Class C version of our RV. Oh wow! Eventually, I have people that want it now, but right. I probably won't roof crush test till probably fall. Mm -hmm. right. All these guys pull up to hospitals and sharpen and repair and service hospital instruments out of these vehicles, and they wanted a bigger vehicle, so I right. created this body to be the lightest weight body in the United States right now. Right. So this is going to be the workshop here. Uh, what they do? This is the sharpening and buffing and. Mm -hmm. All that side, and we have a dust collector system. This is the work side where they tweak and bend and right. change rivets. And then there's a glass beater up front and a sonic glass. A, a health department unit for a Mercedes dealer in Kentucky they picked up last week. And it's got the same batteries the RV has, the same air conditioner the RV has, but it's a mobile health department vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, after I created that for them, they're sending me five more already. I'll, I'll have one for the whole state of Kentucky for right. them. A tray of surgical tools can cost up to $100,000. I'll we'll bring 10 trays out of this and service it. It keeps the hospital from having to stock so many trays. Right. So if this rascal doesn't work, they can't work. You do have what I did is I elevated at eight inches. You now get a service it right here. All the oil change and everything is right here. Mm -hmm. I'm sucking in the fresh air and from the side blowing the hot air off the bottom. Everyone else puts that generator down here and bounces the hot air and sucks it back in and wonders why the generator overheats constantly on 180 degree asphalt. Right. So by making this install, we make all the cables long enough where they can slide it out and service it because you have to change the belt once in a while in it mm -hmm. without ever disconnecting a cable. So that saves tons of hours of labor for that. And it goes right back in. Oh, so we're making it into a traveling vehicle for him for Doberman Pinscher. That is Linex that has wow. a paint mixed into it on this whole vehicle. Every inch of it. 
have two cafeterias going here. Mm -hmm. And then we build a cabinet system for storage and then the batteries are going to be underneath an inverter and all that. And then in the back we're going to have two big dog cages. I was going to ask, where do the Dobermans go? So we're creating a drawer system out of marine plastic for storage underneath the dog. Okay. And then this will have two big wire dog cages in the back. Okay. It's got the 12 volt air finisher up above them. Okay. And this will have the same battery system the RV has to keep the dogs comfortable. The head Mercedes guy, Walter Block, at the time called me and said, Terry, I got a project for you. The lady that won this Sprinter van has a dress salon business in West Palm Beach, Florida. She wants a mobile dress salon. I had to create this vehicle to look like her salon in West Palm Beach, Florida. Huh. So as you look at this, this is the inside of it. Um, I did all the ornate woodwork and we created this beautiful bench and they had the latest clothes here and all this is about all the clothes and then the back we stored shoes and things. So um, it, it's just an incredible vehicle. As you're at an operating room, he'll be in the parking lot and they send a tissue sample down in 15 minutes, he radios the surgeon what the result is. And if it is cancer, they keep sending it down to He says, you got it on. It happens while you're on the operating table one time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go back for a second surgery. Mm -hmm. This is a mobile computer classroom I built for Southern University probably 18, 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice a little similarity to what I did out right. there. Mm -hmm. But this was a little bit bigger bus, but and we did less kids in it. But each one of these has a little computer through that glass thing. And uh, we, some hospitals are so big, they don't need a motorized vehicle. And we turn a shipping container into a surgical instrument repair facility. Mm -hmm. And they set it in a loading dock. Right. And I do power jacks at one end of it to level it. And it stays in the loading dock all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. This is my really cool kayak. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> This has twin 55 pound thrust trolling motors on a kayak. I took the and split the throttles and put them beside my seat. I have a 200 amp hour lithium ion battery up front and I turn it by speeding up one motor or the other and I can reverse it one motor and forward and the other and spin on a dime in a channel and it's really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this is You're controlling anything. You can see our floor. A little bit different from most. Yeah. That's an inch and a half composite subfloor. Oh. We make that floor. I'll show you this right, right here? We make it, but we create. This is an insulated floor. Oh. That's what we glue down on top of the factory floor, and there's not a screw through the floor. We use 3M BHB tape and 3M uh, urethane adhesives. Okay. So the BHB tape grabs the floor the minute you hit down, and then we call it Hershey Kisses, the 3M uh, adhesives that are caulked. That once those dry, it's like you screwed it down again. Yeah. Right. Uh, but the BHB tapes acts like a washer, so you never squish your cock beyond where it's optimal. Okay. To grab. Well, this is the new staircase you built. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? It drags a lot while you're and driving. Actually, this right? is how I create how we do our cabinetry. The first thing we do after we do our floor is we put this board down on the floor. Okay. That's the where your cabinets hit the floor, that sets okay. them in stone. The guys can't miss that. Right. And then what we do is we square, we have a monster square around here somewhere that's like six foot tall that we sit in and we square the front one this way and we square the aisle this way. And when you look down the aisle, no matter what this vehicle's doing, which they all are different, what mm -hmm. they do, mm -hmm. they're always dead on. Mm -hmm. And you pay attention chunk. to your aisle. What the walls do, they can do, I don't care. Right. Because every one of these are different. They're up to three quarters of an inch different. If this was steel, it'd be a real heavy part. That's How light stronger is it? than steel. <laughs> can you do it with one hand? Oh, yeah. It's very light. Oh, wow. Oh, you can feel it. It's really light. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is just like it's air. It's 30% lighter than aluminum, but it's stronger than steel. So this whole, this is a floor that you saw over there once we foam cut, laminate it and everything. This is, and we make the floor interlock into the wall. So everything is designed to be unlike anything anyone else has ever done before. This is all sandblasted because when we do our urethane adhesion, it sticks better it sticks. than the sandblasted yeah. part than the smooth part would. So we take all that out and have it all sandblasted. This is where we uh, vacuum the skins on it. 
No. Tighten them down. all come over here and they'll slide it over. And this is the vacuum table. So this is all getting ready to go over to the table and get skinned. So anywhere that we want to fasten something, we actually build backers in between the panels. And mm -hmm. we can run screws through and grab a hold of that real nice. So this is a front wall and rear wall. So those are our bulkhead walls. You can put bleach on this stuff. I mean, it's just a great, great product. But we had that with, gosh, how many people go through those vehicles at the right. show. I mean, it's just constant for a week. And all I did is soap and water wipe down. It was right back to where it was. You couldn't tell anyone ever stepped on it. And it really gives you a nice padded floor. So, so actually, was, if you had pets, like cats or dogs, you could have them on this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They can't hurt it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is what everything is wrapped around with the marine right. vinyls. Like right. You saw under that's all the padded, beautiful looking vinyls. This is actually a sign material that I've been using for about 25 years. Both sides. Mm -hmm. And this is created to go on a sign outside that they put a graphic on and it lasts forever right. outside. Mm -hmm. It just happens to work beautifully as my walls and ceiling mm -hmm. and all the stuff instead of the lawn that hates moisture, humidities, and everything that a vehicle has. Right. And then what we do different is we use 3M uh, Hook and Loop. Hook and Loop. Because <laughs> that's a different brand. But this is what your eye zoom goes on your windshield with in your car. Right. Oh, okay. It's $340 a roll. And it's not a real big roll. Right. So we do pieces like this, and then we'll put caulk dabs with uh, 3M urethane adhesive that they've tested for me. And when you put it together, now on the Velcro, I don't use caulk tabs. But you'll hear that snap mm -hmm. when you go to pull it apart. Anything that I want to remove is done with <laughs> that. So anyone else would use what's called a Christmas tree fastener or a panel fastener. And right. you see that on car doors of cars. Problem is, when they go in and you pull them out, they don't like going in again. Right. So you get one use out of it. Well, if a dealer has to get at anything behind the door and work on anything, somebody's replacing those panel fasteners, which means you have to unstaple the whole door panel put in new panel fasteners and how many dealers are going to do that for you right. without charging a bundle mine just unsnaps and you can do it a hundred times 200 times 300 times it doesn't care right. and the dealer gets to pop it back on and again it's just less labor and it can't warp can't mold can't mildew can't what happens remember i said the vehicles flex as you go down the road when you fasten a screw through wood and the vehicle's moving eventually that screws Wallering out the wood to the point, eventually it doesn't grab anymore. Mm -hmm. This stuff can doesn't do that wiggle, forever. but it doesn't let loose. There's a little bit of wiggle in it. Mm -hmm. So it allows that without harm. And everything we put in is done with that in mind. That yeah. Let it wiggle, just don't let it let loose. Come on, man. This is a 2019, so I'm probably uh, going to be putting AGM batteries in this. Just, oh, okay. It's an immediate $18,000 swing on cost from going AGM compared to lithium. So right. there's access points behind here to get it wiring. To get it wiring. Through. So years from now, if you had to change something in a wire, you can pop this panel, pop this panel, and actually get at wiring that runs throughout the vehicle. Everywhere. If you look back in there, that's the air conditioner oh, cool. above floor. The other part's below floor. So you it mean under here? Part of space. It's super right. quiet. It is so cool. When you hit the button, it sucks it down, spins, and sucks it down again, and it's just separated from the next one.